Hello there, horse chestnuts. So we're going to finish off our fractions unit by looking at fractions of an amount. Let's look at the following and see if you can work it out. And remember, your multiplication tables are really important with these questions. So, Annie and Mo are finding fractions of amounts. Annie is trying to find one fifth of 45. She draws this bar model. So you can see quite clearly that Annie has split that 45 into those different sections, five different sections. So how does a bar model represent the calculation? What is one fifth of 45? So hopefully using your multiplication tables, you'll be able to work out what is times by five to equal 45. And here you go. Okay, the answer is nine. Okay, so that 45 has been split into five different sections and each section is worth nine. Right, so now you've worked out what one fifth of 45 is, you can move on to the next step. I'm always trying to find three fifths of 45. Now, if one fifth of 45 is nine, what are three fifths going to be? Look at the bar model. It shows you quite clearly that if nine is in one box, then three fifths will be three boxes of nine. And again, if you use your times tables, you'll be able to work that out. Hopefully you ended up with the answer of 27 because each box, as we said, is worth nine. Three times nine is 27. So three fifths of 45 is 27. OK, so now we're going to look at the next few problems. And these problems involve you using exactly the same skills. So exactly the same ones you've just used. So please don't worry. One third of 27. So we are taking 27 and splitting it into three different sections. So 27 divided by three, what would your answer be? Now you've worked out what one third means equals, sorry, you should be able to work out what two thirds equal because you're adding two sections together. Finally, for A, you've got three thirds of 27. So what are three thirds of 27 going to equal? Well, three thirds equals a whole one. OK, so you've got a big clue there. Moving on to B, one third of 72. So we're taking 72, we're dividing it by three. So how much will be in each section? Similarly, for the second one and B, one six of 72. So you're taking 72, you're dividing it by six, okay? How many would be in each section? And finally for B, you've got one twelfth of 72. So 72 divided by 12, how many are going to be in each section? Moving on to C, get a little bit trickier, but we'll focus on the 90. So one third of 90, well actually that's straightforward. Take 90, divide it by three, how many will be in each section? For the second one on C, we've got two six of 90. So you've got to do two steps here. You need to take 90, divide it by six, and then you need to add two sections together because you've got two six of 90. Finally, three ninths of 90. So you take your 90, you're dividing it by nine, you're working out how many is in each section and you need to add up together three of those sections. Okay, and that'll give you your answer. Remember, pause this if you need to, to help you have the time. Can you spot any patterns? Remember, using your multiplication skills, you do have them, so do take that time. And here we've got our answers. So one third of 27 is nine, because nine times three is 27. And therefore, if one third of 27 is nine, then we add together two thirds, which would equal 18. And you can see for the last one on A, three thirds of 27, well, that's the whole one. So that's all of the amount would equal 27 because three times nine is 27. For B, we've got one third of 72. So we take 72, we divide it by three, and that would equal 24. Similarly, one six of 72. We take 72, we divide it by six, and that would equal 12. And then the last one on B, one twelfth of 72. So we take 72, we divide it by 12, and that would equal six. Moving on to C, right? One third of 90. So you take your 90, you divide it by three, and that will equal 30. Now that you've worked out one third of 90, let's move on to two six of 90. Two six of 90. 
Well, one six of 90, right, would be 15. But we need to add two six together. So that is going to give us 30. And you can see that three ninths of 90 gives us an answer of 30 as well. That's because one ninth of 90 is going to be 10. So if you add three lots of 10 together, you get your 30. Hopefully that makes sense. If you made a few mistakes, go back and check. Make sure you feel confident enough, OK? Remember, do take your time. OK, so let's move on. Now what we're doing is we're matching the calculation on the left hand side with the answer on the right hand side. OK, so let's have a look. Five eighths of 48. So what you need to do is do 48 divided by eight and whatever that answer is, make sure you get five lots of it and match it with the other side. Then you've got two thirds of 48. So work out what one third of 48 is, double that answer and match it with the other side. Then five six of 48. So what is one six of 48? Work that out first. 48 divided by six, what is that answer? Then you need five lots of that and match it with the other side. And finally, three quarters of 48. So you do 48 divided by four, and whatever that answer is, you need three lots of it, and it will match with the last one on the other side. Take your time. Again, it's using those multiplication tables. You've got two steps of each problem, so make sure you take those steps carefully. And here you can see the answers very clearly, okay? So five eighths of 48. One eighth of 48 is six. So five lots of six would equal 30. So five eighths of 48 is 30. Two thirds of 48, okay? So you find one third of 48, which is 16. You double it and that equals 32. Five six of 48. Well, one six of 48 is eight and five lots of eight are 40. And finally, three quarters of 48, okay? So you take 48, okay? You divide it by four, and that will equal 12. And three lots of 12 is 36. Hopefully you've been able to do those. I'm sure you have. Okay, so now we need to get to the stage where we need to take the skills we've been learning and apply them now. Okay, so let's look at the questions and see how we do. We are tricky, but take your time and work through them carefully. 165 children and adults go on a school trip. Two thirds of the people are children. How many adults are on the trip? So you take the 165 and you need to divide it by three because it's talking about thirds. One third will be the amount of adults on the trip. Two thirds will be the amount of children on the trip. So work those out carefully and tell us how many adults are on that trip. So one third will be adults on the trip. OK, now there's question B. You need to keep in mind how many children there are. OK. So three fifths of the children are boys. So whatever that number is that you have for the children on the school trip, you need to set that number and divide it by five. OK, once you've worked out one fifth, you need to get three lots of that together to tell us how many boys are on the trip. OK, finally, seven tenths of the children have an apple for lunch. How many children do not have an apple for lunch? So again, you need to go back to that initial calculation you did of the amount of children on this trip. You take that number, you divide it by 10 this time. OK, then how many children do not have an apple for lunch? So you need three tenths. So you need three lots of those tenths to tell us how many children do not have an apple for lunch. Try and work through it carefully. Do take your time and have a go. So let's look at the answers. We had 165 children and adults going on a school trip. Two thirds of the people are children. How many adults are on the school trip? You can see the answer is 55, but let's work through it to make sure you fully understand. We took that 165 and we divide it by three, okay? And 165 divided by three is 55. So one third of 165 is 55. Two thirds therefore would be 110. So you've got 110 children compared to 55 adults.
Now that 110 children was key to the next question because it says three fifths of the children are boys. So we had to take 110 divided by five, right? And 110 divided by five would equal 22. So one fifth of 110 is 22. We needed three lots of that. So three lots of 22 is 66. Finally, for question C, we needed to again take that 110 children. But this time we weren't dividing by five. You can see quite clearly we're dividing by 10. Now the question says seven tenths for children have an apple for lunch. So we take 110 and we divide it by 10. And one tenth of 110 is 11. OK, so one tenth of 110 is 11. Now, if seven tenths have an apple, that means 77 children have got an apple. And it also means that 33 children do not because three tenths would equal 33. Finally, we've got a question here, which hopefully you'll be able to work out by taking your time and carefully looking through it. It says here, 320 people were asked about their favorite flavor of ice cream. And the pictogram here shows how they've selected. The first thing you need to do is to count up how many ice creams there are there, okay? And you divide that by 320 because that'll let you know what each equals, okay? And it says, how many people chose cho mint choc chip? So once you've divided 320 by however many ice creams there are, you'll be able to work out what each of the ice creams stands for. And then you need to multiply that number by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Once you've worked out what each ice cream stands for, you'll then be able to work out the difference between those who picked vanilla and those who picked chocolate. Have a go, but remember the first calculation needs to be 320 divided by however many ice creams are there to work out what each ice cream represents. And hopefully you've got these answers. You can see that there were 20 ice creams altogether and therefore 320 divided by 20 will equal 16. Therefore each ice cream, I should say, represents 16 okay and if you take 16 and add it one two three four five six seven times you will get 112 for the amount of people who chose mint choc chip okay for question b you had to work out how many people selected vanilla which is 80 and you had to work out that 48 people chose chocolate and the difference between those amounts is 32. Hopefully that has made sense and you've got a clear understanding. All I can say is thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you very much for taking part and for going through the sessions. Have a very happy Christmas and I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Take care, everybody.